Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are checking out the 2016 Volkswagen Beetle Dune. Now the Beetle Dune is a unique take on the 1.8 liter Turbo Beetle. It features a raised suspension, contrast stitching on the interior, Dune exclusive seats, unique bumper and air intakes, black cladding on the exterior, and a rather large rear spoiler. Under the hood, the 1.8 turbo produces 170 horsepower and 184 pound-feet of torque available from just 1500 RPM, which is sent to the front wheels through a six-speed automatic transmission. As far as the interior, there's plenty of legroom and plenty of adjustment for the driver, so you can move the steering wheel up down. You've got a nice uh, infotainment system here, which does feature Apple CarPlay, intuitive, simple climate controls, which I do like, visibility out the front and to the sides, checking your blind spot is fine, looking out the back is also fine so good visibility all around there are however a few quirks to the interior uh, as I mentioned in my previous Beetle review for example uh, the e-brake the handbrake it can come into contact with the armrest if the armrest is down so they kind of interfere uh, the rear view mirror is tiny so you can't actually see out the whole rear window using the rear view mirror if it was larger you could so it's silly to me why they do that another thing the moonroof uh, you can close the cover and still have the moonroof roof open and you know I think that leads to the potential of having it closed with the moonroof open and then you know you park your car it rains it all soaks through disaster you get the idea and then the other thing on uh, the last point here is just the seat belt is super far back so I'm a tall guy 6'1 and I've got the seat further back than most people probably will and I can't reach with my left hand to grab that seat belt it's too far back so instead you got to turn and pull it over you know that may seem tedious but every single time I get in this car Car, I forget and I try and pull at the seatbelt and I can't grab it. Now there are a few cars that do this. The Mustang for example also has it because it has these windows that go far back which I do really like from a visibility standpoint. What I don't get however is though why they don't just add a little clip right here so you can hold that seatbelt right there which is exactly what the Mustang does and then it's not a pain to put it on. Minor I know but it's still something that I think should exist. So what's it like to drive? Well, I've actually been surprised how much I've enjoyed driving it, uh, especially considering this has the six-speed automatic rather than the DSG or the uh, manual transmission. Now, I had the Beetle R-Line with the manual transmission in, and I think part of what kind of ruined that for me was just how tall the gearing was. So in this, it actually has much more aggressive gearing than the manual transmission, and as a result, I find it to feel just as quick uh, and definitely be a bit more fun to drive. Now, of course, it's not as involved as the manual transmission, uh, but the gearing is such that it makes it a bit more peppy, a little more fun, and you've got all that torque at 1500 RPM, uh, so it kind of does come alive uh, at these low speeds. Now, like any automatic transmission, the gear shifting uh, is a little bit of a delay when you put it over into the manual mode and you try to select yourself, uh, but it is pretty smooth, so overall it feels fine to me. Uh, you know, you just have a little bit of a delay, which is pretty typical of planetary automatic transmissions. As far as the fuel economy, it's rated 25 in the city, 34 on the highway, and I took it on a fairly long road trip up to Shelton, Washington from Portland, Oregon, uh, and on that trip there and back, um, probably around 200 plus miles, uh, did over 35 miles per gallon average and you know there's some backcountry roads out there which I was having some fun on so for the fact that it got over 35 uh, for that entire trip is pretty impressive um, so really good fuel economy is certainly possible in this thing the steering also I've been surprised and maybe this is because I've just been driving a ton of SUVs lately uh, but you know it just feels it's got a good weight to it so as you come into the corner the weight definitely builds it's not an effortless uh, steering which you know some of the other Volkswagen wagons I've been in have felt pretty effortless and this one actually feels like you know it requires effort and you get feedback through that uh, because it builds progressively as you come into the corners so we've got some nice bends coming up you do definitely have some body roll this is on a lifted suspension so a little bit higher CG um, there is body roll there I like the throttle mapping it's easy to control nice and linear solid brakes there you know, of course, as you push the limit in these front-wheel drive cars, you are going to start to understeer. Uh, but this thing's actually pretty fun. I find myself actually enjoying this more than that R-Line that I was in. And really, I think the biggest difference is the gearing. I mean, this might weigh a little bit less because it's the 1.8 versus the 2.0 liter. Um, but I've had more fun in this one. 
Okay, so we're gonna check out the zero to 60. I looked in the owner's manual and I don't see any buttons. I cannot find if there is a way to turn the traction control off, so that's gonna be left on. I did see in the owner's manual that the stability control can't be turned off, so I believe you also cannot turn off the traction control. So either way, I've got it in sport mode. I'll put my foot on the brake and the gas, release. I'll probably get a little bit of slip and then, you know, traction control will come on and then it'll just power through the rest of it. So, put on the gas. It actually allowed for a decent amount of slip there. 60. So it looks like you hit 60 right at the end of second gear. So as I mentioned previously, you know, much more aggressive gearing than in the manual transmission. Driving on the highway, you do have a decent amount of tire noise and a little bit of wind noise. Not too bad overall. Hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.